for the next two seasons, are we officially referring to Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium as the Liberty Hole? I think Liberty Hole is hilarious. I just <laughs> don't know what if what they have constitutes as a hole because it's half the day. It's a hole in the stadium. It's bigger than a hole. The seats that are still there are those like coming? The, the chair backs? Are they coming out or are they staying? No, they're st- my parents no, they're sit there. They will be sitting there. Who is going to sit there? My parents, 100%, will be in those seats. The sun will no longer disappear. TJ no. and I will be fried every week. How weird is it going to be to just be like looking out straight at the Coliseum? Wild. That's the. I think the thing, best yeah. part though is we'll be able to keep an eye on our cars right there because yeah. we do park in direct sight line of. It's true. That opening, so we'll be able to see if anything fishy's going on. No lie, if something happened. I would sprint across the field straight through there to that <laughs> opening and straight to my vehicle. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. And David Aldridge is one of the GOATs, one of the all-time legends in covering the NBA. Wrote an article about team grading teams all seasons and has the Grizzlies dead last at 30. <laughs> Were they super active? Were they active at all really this offseason? No. But mm-hmm. unless you feel like there was a there was a gaping need and they just didn't do it or they just made bad decisions, how can you say they had the worst offseason in the NBA? There's plenty of teams that I could think of that they probably got worse. Bad offseasons, yeah. <laughs> Even a team like the Denver Nuggets. Yeah, Denver um, had a bad offseason. The Clippers right, had a bad offseason. Like, 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 I can't like, say the Grizzlies. You, you kept one of the – you retained one of the best shooters in the league. You have a lot of guys coming back that were injured. Mm-hmm. You drafted a guy at 10 that looks like he's going to be a rotation player. I just think it was a really bad take. Tune in to The Anthony Sane Show, Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 p.m. weekly on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Brevin, I'm, I'm earlier this week. I'm watching the DNC, right? And I see your buddy, uh, Barack Obama. Yes, sir. Uh, my good. 44. Speaks, your friend, 44. And, and I see all these people in the crowd who are just in tears, hysterically in tears. Like it, it was, it was like watching an Elvis concert with the with these people in tears. And I thought to myself, is is that how Brevin is in the clubhouse when he sees Barack Obama? <laughs> Is that how? Is that how you look? I, I, the the first time I saw him, it wasn't tears. It was <laughs> it was probably it was just like that was the first time. <laughs> He's probably but, gotten that before though, so you're all right. Ex- exactly. The subsequent times is just I've been able to just be be me. Like I felt I feel really just myself going over and right. talking to him. But okay. the first time that was it was definitely there was. <laughs> <laughs> there was some wide eye. <laughs> Hi, I'm bro, bro. But I'm like, yeah, that's um, uh, yeah, <laughs> that guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic! Well, welcome everyone to Night Court. Uh, this is the podcast. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, I'm Rob Fisher. He is Brevin Knight. Uh, I, you can follow us on Twitter at the Fish Nation at at Brevin Knight Twenty Two and at Night Court Twenty Two. That's where you can get the show as well. And if you're listening to the podcast, you can always watch the podcast as well on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. 
Uh, and we have links to it on Twitter as well. So you can uh, tune in and watch. And we've had a great response of the people watching. And we thank you for that. And we thank you all the people listening uh, as well to the podcast uh, each and every week. And uh, Brevin, today is a special, special show. We've hit the century mark. We've done a hundred shows. A hundred shows. <laughs> Now, knowing you and knowing me, I think we'd both have the same answer of, do you think you would have gotten to 100 shows? I think the answer would have been no. <laughs> hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Not even no. It would have been hell no. Because, right. And I said because the, the two of us, outside of doing our, our work on TV and then you doing your work with Grind City Media, we fly by the seat of our pants like no other. I mean, it, it is literally like, and, and I mean, we started the podcast just in like, well, I mean, we're together so much. We like to talk. We, we might as well just want to do a podcast. Like, sure, let's do one. Yeah, we'll and, talk about and, stuff. And we literally would do it just whenever something hit us. It wasn't weekly. It wasn't on this day. It was just, hey, we, we ain't doing much. It's 11 o'clock tonight. We're on the road. We went, let's, let's just do a podcast. Yeah. And then people people don't even realize how we did the podcast. That's the that's the thing about it. Like, some people used to think, like, we had microphones or we set up some studio-ish thing, and then we, we went to work, and we had some big editing, and then and, and we put it out there. It's like, nah, bro, we set up an iPad. We find something that it can just elevate it some. So that the speaker, the, the so that the microphone side picks up our voices, and then after that, fish goes home and he does some some little I thing. Hit that he, I hit record, cut off the right. beginning and the end, and psh, send it out. Boom! There we go. Podcast. <laughs> Podcast. Here we are. And and now to say to look back and say a hundred, but just to see that it's, it's been nice to be able to 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 make the transition to the video side, and it's been great with Bluff City Media and how they have. Uh, helped us get to this point, but uh, two guys who are uh, irresponsible when they don't have to be responsible. <laughs> to, to That's to a good 100. way to put it. Yeah, is <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, is uh, know what we should pat ourselves on the back. Yeah, now. pats on the back. Yeah, pats <laughs> on the back for us to make it. To 100 episodes. Uh, one of our favorites was uh, when we did the show, we were in Portland. Yes. And we had a game in Portland, and we were staying overnight. And not only did we have a game in Portland, we went out after the game in Portland. And on the walk back to the hotel, it was like, you want to record the podcast? Yeah, let's go ahead and record the podcast. And everybody who was with us, they were like, well, can we? And we did the show in the hotel lobby at about lobby. 1 a.m. And uh, with about five of our friends who were all sitting there as a studio audience one day. So that, that, that was fun. That, that was our biggest studio audience. Yeah, absolutely it was. I mean, it, it was, it was, it, it felt like an audience because, like you said, we were in the lobby of the hotel in Portland. So it was still echoing. There wasn't a lot of people around. But, right. uh, but yeah, that was, that was fun. Though, that, that was, uh, that was definitely a memorable one. That one, and then for me, is also when we did our playoff edition. We were in, in we were in the hotel room, and it was like, hey, we should do like a let's do a playoff one on the road. And had Eric Hasseltine come in, and he sat in with us, and and, and that those to doing though maybe we'll do more of those as we go forward. It's like we did a hundred. Like, what can we do differently for the next hundred? I tell you, the one thing we won't do, we ain't bringing on no guests. So whoever is watching, things like. Oh, maybe they'll do guests. <laughs> no, we ain't doing no guests. But what other changes may we be able to do in our next 100 episodes? Yeah, Brevin doesn't interview people. No, I don't. I don't do the interview thing. Uh, number one, I, I don't. Uh, you got the the questions you want to ask. The thing is, these are going to be people that you know, so you want to ask questions that are that will be interesting to other people. But you also don't want to put them in a uncomfortable position because it's still my friends or it's your right. friend. And so right. uh, I don't want, and I'm just not big on trying to call and ask people to do the show. And then, cause, oh, I don't want, I don't want to do, I told you that we are irresponsible unless we have to be responsible. That's right. I don't, I, we don't have to do it. So we just come on here with the two of us and get off our chest what we need to. 
you don't know how many times there were times when I would text you and it would say something like, do you want to do the podcast today or are you cool? <laughs> <laughs> I just need you to say you're cool so I can say, oh, yeah, I'm cool too. Yeah, and you're like, no, I'm cool, but we'll do it soon. And I'm like, yeah, 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 we'll do it soon. We'll do it soon. <laughs> so how about this? We have been steady now. This yep. is where we go. We, we, I think that was one of the biggest changes also here as of late was that we do it weekly now. And, and we said we yeah. were going to try to be better at doing it weekly. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of where we, where we are at this point. Yeah, no, it's cool. Congratulations to us. Uh, 100 <laughs> episodes <laughs> in the books. And uh, looking forward to the next 100 because uh, you were talking about those playoff shows. And during the playoffs two years ago, uh, we two seasons ago, we we did a show after every playoff game between yes. every playoff game, and that was fun because it was fun to just it was fun to talk about the games and talk about the yes. next game and talk about the series and uh, that was a blast. So hopefully we get back to that this year. Oh, we'll be back. Yeah, as, as long as everyone stays healthy, we'll be, we'll we'll have the opportunity to do it again. Yeah, well, the Grizzly schedule came out uh, in the last week, and uh, it's it's hard to get upset about schedules or get excited about schedules because you play 82, you, you play everybody in your conference three or four times, and you play everybody in the other conference twice. I mean, everybody has the same deal. You're playing the same teams. But there, there are quirks in the schedule that I think you can you can kind of question, and I have some questions on the Grizzly schedule this year. First of all, I know are, you do. There are five game. Last year, the longest road trip was four, and the Grizzlies had three of them. This year, the longest road trip is five, and there are three of them. Now, one of them's five broken up by road the, trips. Yes. Now, one of them's broken up by the All Star break, where it's two okay. before the break and three after the break. But, but the other two are <laughs> five game road trips. That's, I mean, if you're going to have a five game road trip. Okay, I understand being in the West, going out West, and maybe trying to get as many games in as you can. That's that's fine, but to do three of them in a season, that that's that's pretty crazy. The Grizzlies have a stretch from mid December to mid January where they play nine of eleven on the road. They have a stretch at the end of the season where they play eight of eleven on the road, and your three home games are the Lakers, Boston, and Golden State. So, I mean, those are two really tough stretches uh, for the Grizzlies: one in mid December and one in uh, late March. Well, <clears throat> the thing is, for 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 both of those times, it, it is it's still time for them to see how they stack up in those in those situations with with those opponents. Uh, but it's it's also a time where you say mid December, team starting to really come into form. How well are you playing? Did you bank some wins earlier in the year? That's why I say for for this Grizzlies team, they still have a little bit of an advantage in that there weren't a lot of changes to the basketball team in terms of the people that you are relying on to be able to make plays. It was just a matter of being able to play together more. And right. so hopefully the, the chemistry that they were able to have is something that allows them to get off to a good enough start that you're able to have a little bit of a cushion for those scenarios in terms of the road trips, in terms of the, the, the those two stretches where you're on the road uh, for 90% of the time. And so uh, I, I, I feel confident. The other thing is this was always a team that was confident playing on the road. In the seasons that they were successful, they were a very good road team. And so yeah. they, 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 again, have the opportunity, the chips that they'll have on their shoulder and you being able to do it on the road gives you just a little added oomph in terms of to get to get themselves over the hurdle. And then for us, as long as I didn't see where those were and as long as those are West Coast trips, they can have as many five game trips as they want as it pertains to me, because right. that means that in somewhere we got a lot of good weather cities to play enough golf. <laughs> that is in the winter. That's the, that's the best part about being in the Western Conference. The bad that's part, right. of them, we're in the Eastern Conference and we got five games. Now I'm like, Jesus Christ, when can we get back to Memphis? Somewhere yeah. where the weather is at least <laughs> decent in the winter. But now it's like five. Oh, sure. It, it's as long as we throw in, in Phoenix and LA and we throw in, in, in those teams out there, even San Francisco, we throw in the Californias, 
and Phoenix into that mix, then I'm fine with five game road trips or whatever. And then when they bring on the new teams, I'm really going to be happy that we have those type of trips. <laughs> what new teams are you talking about? Oh, I, I think there's just, there's, there may just, there's been some, some talks that. A little chatter? A that, yeah, a little chatter that there may be a casino team coming hmm. uh, and there may be a needle team coming. I mean, oh. that's that's just they just heard some just some chatter. Okay, breaking news here on uh, Night Court on uh, on our 100th episode. <laughs> um, another thing about the schedule, uh, there are 15 back to backs. That's one more than last year, uh, but some of the back to backs are weird, ridiculous. Frankly, yes. Um, tell, one me of them, I, t- tell me something. Tell me because I hopefully we don't have the whole Cleveland thing. I mean, that's been no. We actually have running. a day in Cleveland. We have a night in Cleveland this year. For the first time Uh-oh. forever. Literally like the last five, six years, we've played a yeah. game in Memphis and then back-to-back in Cleveland. What yeah. you got for me now? All right. Well, we got the second game of the season is in Houston. Houston's home opener, of course. Right. Back-to-back, the Grizzlies' home opener against Orlando. Now, why would you have a back-to-back the night before your home opener? We've gone back. Listen. You, you know how I used to always talk about this. I always said there are two NBAs. There, there, and it's, it's, it's fine. It's just, there is the entertainment NBA, and then there's the basketball NBA. And we had moved into the entertainment NBA scenario. It was with Gaja. It was now you, you – Dez is moving up. Jaron, defensive player. You, you're moving up into entertainment NBA. It took one season for us to slip back down. Into the M- just back into the NBA, and because yeah. of that, your schedule then reflects in some in a lot of ways those situations. You have okay. How fresh are your legs on the last game before the All Star break? It's not your legs; it's your mind. Your <laughs> legs can be fine. Your mind right. is shot, and that's why everybody. That's why everybody. You hear everyone talk about stealing a game going into the break. Stealing yeah. games coming out of the break, and it's it has it's not a mental thing. I mean, it's not a physical fatigue. It's a mental fatigue because it's really three quarters of the season by the time you get to All Star break. A back to back heading into the break w- with who? Oh, I don't know. I don't have. You know? Oh, okay. I know. Here, I, I can look at so, it. No, I mean it, it does. I'm, I, I I tell you that this team had to be ready this year for all of the peculiar things to happen, peculiar scheduling, which kind of, what plane we're going to take is, is the, they, I think they it's had to be ready for it all at Phoenix and at the Clippers. Well, at least the one thing it is, is you'll have to be engaged for those games. These won't be games that you walk into thinking like, Oh, we get, okay, we're going to win this game. And these are, and, and being two road games, uh, it's it's gonna be interesting. Out of the break, back to back at Indiana, at Orlando. Oh, we don't get a day in Orlando. That sucks. Is it a back to back? Back to back. We got a back to back in the break, back to back out of the break. And we're at Indiana and then at Orlando. Correct. Oh, what kind of? See, that's that's when I got a problem with the scheduling. We only got two good cities in the Eastern Conference to go to. <laughs> got two. Orlando yes. and Miami. Yes. How do you not no give day. us a day? Back to back how in you, Orlando. How do you give us a no day? Well, what's after what's after the Orlando game? At Cleveland. So we go at Indiana, back to back at Orlando. Yeah. And then we got the day in between Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah, so I maybe we'll stay to, in Orlando at least. I won't. I won't be going to Cleveland. No. So you'll soon. you'll still have Cleveland on a back to back. Cleveland will be on a back to back. It'll just be a golf game back to back. And then the <laughs> other one, <laughs> the other one that's worse than all of them, the Grizzlies will play. This is the third to last game. Okay, you're coming off a three game trip. You were at Miami, at Detroit, at Charlotte. Day off. You have Minnesota at home. On TNT, it's an 8.30 start. Oh. Eight, 
8.30 start against TNT at home. The next night, you play in Denver. And know, know what I'm hoping at that point? Everything is sh- shaken out. No kidding. Uh, and I mean, for, for, people who, for people who don't know, the Denver, Denver is about a two-and-a-half-hour flight. Now, granted, you do pick up an hour, but your body doesn't pick up that hour. And then the drive, 40 minute fl- it's 40 minute 40, drive. 45, 50 minute drive uh, to downtown to get to your hotel. So you're, you're talking about getting in bed at 3 a.m. And, oh, and you're talking about like having to play in altitude that night. I thought there was like a timing thing that they had with the with the league that there, you should have a, a – a certain amount of time that you should have the opportunity to rest before your next game, because this will be this this is stretching if that is true in any way. This is stretching your how much time you're going to be able to to recover and be ready to play a game and play a game as you said in altitude. Well, and to pile on the whole thought process of what we talked about last week, that we're a forgotten team with a forgotten star. This just piles onto it more. Nine games on national television. Uh, that's down from 13 last year and 18 two years ago. Now, the league, the league, the NBA, the association, and Adam Silver said teams will not play the day before or after high profile nationally televised games. There won't be back to backs around. Right these high-profile nationally televised games. The Grizzlies have nine nationally televised games. Nine. Four of them are on a back-to-back. Four of them. What did I do? What what was my explanation? Let me me ask you these. Grizzlies, Minnesota. For what you expect, is Grizzlies, Minnesota high-profile? Yeah, is, is it's, it's Grizzlies it's been, it's been it has been a, it has been a matchup since the playoffs that has been must see TV with with those two stars especially Grizzlies Phoenix. It's been nothing but exhilarating all the finishes that they've had over the and, years and should be two really good teams, right? Exactly, and again with with three great stars on the floor, which I'll say almost four because. Listen, Desmond Bain boy is, is scratching that is is knocking at the door. Yeah, we forgot about him too. No, hey, hey, I'm trying to come in, and I'm serious about I'm serious about coming in. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you, and and, and I th- I think people have forgotten about him too. I mean, I I think the team's just been forgotten about. They play Minnesota, Phoenix, New Orleans, Milwaukee, uh, Milwaukee, another team that should be really, really good. Those are high-profile, no. nationally televised games, and the Grizzlies play the day after all four of them. Okay, I was about to say, it's the, the national game is the first night yeah. of, of all of those. And then there's the, the back to – yeah, no, that – that uh, it just – it speaks to exactly what I told you, is that they are going to – and it was literally one seed. Look how, look how quickly this has happened. Not yeah. even one season. And that season was marred by injury. It wasn't just as if they didn't play well. They had nobody right. available. Nobody. It was Jaron in the G League. I mean, we had we had the most players ever in NBA history on the roster. The most starting lineups. That that you. I mean, it's, it is. It was. It was literally a cert. You could have played it. Da, 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 da. I mean, I was just juggling. Taylor's over there like this. Throw me another one. Yeah. <laughs> Throw me another one. I mean, that, so it, it's. I think I, I. It'll be. And of course, we feel a, a little bit more biased because we watch. But I think just as a a team, uh, and knowing these guys and their personalities, uh, I, I I expect I expect a fun season for Grizzlies fans. Did you hear that? No, did, you I did mean, a good job. You pushed the cough on I, your. I muted myself. Pack. How about that? That was yeah, good. That was that? pretty, pretty quick. Too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'm 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 a little disappointed with the the Grizzly schedule, but it is what it is, man. It's just uh, it's the remind me tour, and the Grizzlies need to go out and remind everyone who they are. And uh, yes. and and I think the one thing about the schedule is it's conducive to get off to a good start. Um, 
you know, and, and that's something I think is very important uh, for this Grizzlies team this year is to get off to a get off to a huge. good start. Yeah, huge. And I and uh, I seen a couple of clips of, of Zach Eady and Jai working working out together, which is going to be critical in, in terms of that chemistry between the two of them. Uh, and so yeah, they they're going to have to hit the ground running. It can't. I'm be excited a, to I'm excited to hear Jaw's report on Zach Eady. Yeah. Because I, I if think, if Ja likes him. Zach Eady, I'm cool with him. <laughs> I, I think he's gonna like him. I, I thought, like I told you when we made the choice, I thought it was the right choice. Uh, I, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a a a nice. He's gonna be a nice addition. Yeah. All right. Couple of uh, NBA notes. Uh, Chet Holmgren uh, was interviewing Paul George. How about that? Uh, Chet Holmgren said, you all need a bucket at the end of the game. Who's shooting the game-winning shot? You or Joel Embiid? Paul George said his answer was very quick and simple. That's a Nick Nurse question. <laughs> I, I think I think what it's going to be is whichever one of them has it going and, and will continue to feed that player. But it's a you nice figure that out, right? I mean, it's a nice position for Nick Nurse to be in where, where you, you really could have three guys who could take a, a final shot, and it puts the defense in, in, a, in a different position than, than any Sixers team has had in some time. And so uh, they have continued. We always talk about was Tobias Harris going to be that next, the other star for them. Well, now they got three stars. Uh, and so you got three ways that you can go in the end of the game. And for Nick Nurse, that, that's definitely a step in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, I think they'll be fine. Uh, I mean, stars play together; they get used to each other, and you just figure it out. I mean, it, like it, you said, the it, thing it's, is no it's who, who's, who's going. Usually, you know, who's got right. it going. It's usually the guy. I mean, um, and, and the thing is, really, Paul George, I think, will will be fine in that in this role that he doesn't have to be the savior or the man. So the, right. this night I had to do is cool, but not every night are they going to have to go to him at his locker and say, "Well, what happened on that final play?" Uh, Anthony Edwards. We like Anthony Edwards, right? I like, like Ant Man. Yeah. Uh, he says that Michael Jordan was the only player with real skill back in the day. He said, "Quote: I didn't watch it back in the day, so I can't speak on it. They say it was tougher back then than it is now, but I don't think anybody had skill back then. Michael Jordan was the only one that really had skill. You know what I mean? So that's why when they saw Kobe, they were like, "Oh my God!" But now everybody's got skill. <laughs> I, so if we just, I, I, if, take my personal feelings out of it okay. just go back to what he said first he said <laughs> michael jordan i i didn't watch it back well first then. he said talk, i don't watch they, it i didn't watch but, it hold on, so that's what i'm saying i i didn't i didn't watch it back then they said michael jordan uh we saw what he did but i i think that he was probably the only one with skill and that's what but you didn't watch it so right. how do you know if anybody else had skill at that at that point in time it's just sometimes you get – sometimes the answer in and of itself lets you know really what the mind is of what you said. Your answer made no sense. <laughs> like, like, like it just – the answer made no sense. If you never uh, saw the people, how in the hell can you say that they had no skill? And it was just, and it was just the one person. And so it, it's, it's sad that, that you that, – that we guys today – it's the same way as I talk about guys that played back in the day with, well, when when we played, the game was like this. When, oh, bro, it, it's, the game is changing. Get over it. It's what it is. But even but for guys that are playing today, if you and you've never seen those guys, for you to then make the statement that, well, no, to be honest with you, it, the only thing that has happened is social media has made it a bigger thing. We had big dudes dribbling the basketball, shooting threes, as it was back then that were versatile to shoot the three and play inside. Now today, in terms of what makes you be a good player, the entire the entire athletic side has become way more than the skill side, if you want yeah. the truth of the matter. The skill side has become secondary to what you do as an athlete, whereas in the past it was the skill of what allowed guys to do what they did, and athleticism came from there. So it's just you just listen to the answer and say, how much, how much will I really put into this? Because in, just in your own answer, it made zero sense. <laughs> I think uh, if you want a 30-minute conversation on it, tell Dominique Wilkins what Ant said. Oh! Bruh. 
You there's a podcast right there. We want to interview somebody. We could just get say that one question. Just yeah. say that one thing, and yeah. we'd be good for the whole show. Yeah. Oh, and it'd be great. It'd, it'd be it'd, it'd be great. It'd be great the number of players that he'd mention, uh, oh, and then the yes. conversations that he had with people. <laughs> oh, it would be. I literally would just. I would just do this. Yeah, oh, it'd be great. It'd be great. <laughs> Dominic's a long talker, but love him. Love him. Uh, all right. FanDuel ranked the top 10 players in the NBA. FanDuel okay. ranked the top 10 players in the NBA. You want to you wanna try and take a stab at it, or what? Do you, how do you want to do this? No, I, I, I could I give don't. it to you 10 through 1, 1 through 10. What do you want to do? Ten, I, I want to go 10 through 1. 10 I mean, through one. No, yeah, you know, I see the game a little bit differently. So it's, there's no need in me trying to say who these people are. And, and this is the top 10 NBA players right now. Top 10 NBA okay. players right now. Right now. Yes, right, right now. Number 10, LeBron James. I don't want, I don't need, I don't want the list anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, you don't know say anymore. <laughs> The list is the list has the list has no no validity. It's got a flaw right. already. It's, I mean, come on, bro. All right, oh, well, just go. Ahead. I want to hear the nine. Let me hear these nine other guys. Okay. Nine, Anthony Edwards. Right. <laughs> Are you laughing that he's above LeBron? I, <laughs> I'm, I'm just. That's fine. Go, go ahead. All right, eight, Devin Booker. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Seven, Joel Embiid. Six. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm at a loss, bro. I'm. I'm. I'm already at a loss. Yeah. That we've gone. We've gone that, and we said that though all three of those are before LeBron. Correct. <laughs> that right. is. That's what they're saying. Six. Six. Kevin Durant. I don't know. See, one of the greatest. One of the greatest scores ever played a game. I mean, you knew his name would be in there. That's fine. Yeah, but that's a little low, right? Six. Uh, yeah, I'm, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. See what I'm saying? It's always what I say with these lists and stuff is you also need to say what's the criteria that they use to yeah. say that these are the – these are because I mean, at the end it's still arbitrary. But right. Who else you got? Who's five? Five is Steph Curry. Okay. Four, Shea Gilgis Alexander. Okay. Four, Shea Gilgis Alexander. Three, Luca. Two Giannis and one Jokic. I I don't understand the LeBron James at ten. Yeah. Um, the 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 Jokic is is, is uh, he's he's a fantastic player. Uh, he's he, he's good. I don't I don't I don't argue with the number one. I don't yeah. argue with Giannis being up there. Uh, I, Luca. I, 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 Lucas. I mean, he he does what he does. That's you. You would put him as one of the top players in the game today. It's just I don't, I, I don't understand how much more that that the guy has to do. He just continue to put his teams on his back and get them to play, including that they the country, be with all of the best players in the world on the team. The guys who are on this list, <laughs> and he was the best player. <laughs> It, that they defer to, like yes, not, not the best, not just the best player because we all look at him like, look what he did. Like the other guys on the team deferred to him. Yeah. All right. Uh, one other note: uh, Oklahoma State football. Do you see that they're going to wear QR codes on the back of their helmets, so you can uh, you you can you can get the QR code and you can send them NIL money. <laughs> you you can send. To the school or to that person? <clears throat> to the player. Shut the front door. Yeah. Now, I don't know how you're going. There are little QR codes on the back of a helmet. I don't so know. So, you I, have to, like, pause the TV real quick? And, and, I like, guess. How about yeah. you got to get in the game? <laughs> <laughs> what well, if he's, he's not on the TV? Well, that's what I'm saying. But, like, how about he's just, like, get on the camera? Like, he's one of the 11 that's on the field at the time. And why do they but keep the showing the quarterback's face? Show the back of his head so I can get his QR code. <laughs> I mean, this NIO, this, 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 I, I, I call it at this point, this begging for money. It's really. Oh, it's unbelievable. It, it, 
it has taken it has taken just such a turn and twist as to yeah. how you're gonna how you're gonna raise money. It's yeah. Just crazy. I, I mean, I listen. I, I I I want. I always say I want all of these all of the kids to to make a living, but there there still there still should be a distinction between college and professional. And right now, you got these kids being pros really in college. And ask them to do schoolwork and do all this other stuff, but really, I'm just paying you to play this sport. Right. <laughs> it's, it's it's yeah. When's the last time you heard of a prop forty eight? <laughs> like I'm, like it's it's, it's 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 literally professional. It's professional sports in college. That's where it's yeah. become, and almost yeah. that's the way that coaches start coaching. Like. I'm a coach like it's a contract. Whereas I, I thought I think like back in the day as a coach, you wanted the best for the kids. Like I still want this kid to he might not be a pro, but I want him to go off and be a productive human and do. Now this is just hired help. It's like just it's literally just just you just hire someone to help me be better, help out, and then move on. But the, the personal connection side in college, uh, I think is is what's going to be missed. And, and I well, mean, now you can you make business every year to too. Right, it's business I mean, decisions. Yeah. I, I'm telling, I, I tell my brother this all the time. If somebody came to me and as a coach and was like, I, I, I would like to get X amount. If y'all don't pay me X amount, then I'm leaving, whatever. It's like, first off, I would just be like, all right, we'll leave. You ain't holding me under no doggone gun. So I'm going to pay you an X amount or you're going to leave. All right, go get your money. But then if, they, if you do stay, then I'm coming and, and you don't play well, now I'm coming to the locker room like, bro, you was asking me for – X amount and you ain't doing shit on the court. Yeah. I need some you I need production on the court. Now I'm not I'm not worrying anymore that this is a 18 year old kid. Yeah. Now it's, you, this, now it's Kirby a contract. Smart's trying player. to find guys. It's, it's, I mean, you you these are contracted players. Which is which is I right, listen, I wouldn't I wouldn't make, yeah, breaking news. <laughs> it wouldn't work for me. My, my, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it will work, but it would be the people that were Destin, they wanted to be there. All yeah. the other, I couldn't do. These coaches today, you got to do too much ass kissing to kids. I can't Dude, do. and now you got to recruit everybody because of the transfer portal. I mean, you're, you're recruiting everybody in the game, and not to mention high school kids. I mean, you're, you're recruiting everybody who plays college football as well. It's it's insane. And then the NIL, yeah. it's, it's, I mean. You recruit your own what players. What a tough coach. job, man. You recruit yeah. your own players. Like yeah. you're trying to you're trying to win, play, but you're also trying to entice them to stay. Like, why should yeah. you? I mean, it's it's a tough job right now for college yeah. coaches. All right, a couple of toasts this week. How about Hideki Matsuyama? Huh? Right in front of our faces, Brevin, as we were watching it there on Sunday at the FES JC. He uh he he looked like it, he was co- he collapsed. I mean, he looked. It wasn't like he looked like he was collapsing. It looked like he collapsed. It, 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 it coming into the last five holes looked like he was in control, and then he gets the double, he gets the bogey, then he double bogeys fifteen, and then after that, you turn around and look. Not only has he lost the lead, he is now in second place with a, a stroke behind Hoblin. Yeah, and then they go in. He goes into sixteen, and you think he's falling apart. His two great shots, and then from thirty yards, he can't get up and down for the birdie on sixteen, which is a par five. He just pars that hole. And you look, you feel like, damn, he just fell apart. We watched him fall apart. And he goes to two of the tougher holes, 17 and 18, birdie 17 and 18 to win by two. Well, he, he, all he had to do was par 18 and, you know, Man, just you stay alive shot. and everything. And he takes a shot that everybody was like, oh, my God, he's going for it. And that's not, that's a difficult shot to go for. I mean, he that took big, big bones for <laughs> Hideki or Shideki Matsuyama. No, Hideki Hideki. Matsuyama. Uh, Yeah. yeah. He, uh, that was, that was amazing. Yeah. Awesome. So toast, toast to Hideki Matsuyama for, uh, being the uh, FedEx St. Jude champion. And now at the clubhouse, you can get the Hideki burger. I wonder what they're going to do, do to it. It'll it'll be good. Yeah. And I got, I got a toast. I got my, my, my toast is, uh, along some different lines, but, uh, it's going to be in a positive and in a happy way, a, a joyous. And I'm going to toast my Aunt Wanda, uh, who passed away uh, this past weekend. And, and uh, she was, she was a, they, they strengthened our family, and that that will never be touched. And and I just want to tell her that I miss her, 
Uh, love her very much. Um, I, I will miss her pinches. I will miss her punches even when we get excited. That was her way of telling us how much she loved us. She was she was a physical aunt, and, and, but small in stature, but, but physical. And, and so I want to give you a toast on Wanda. Hopefully you're up there watching down on us. Uh, and and we, we, we love you. I love you very much. So uh, toast to you and the influence that you had on our entire family. Absolutely. Toast, Dan and Wanda. Mm. All right, great stuff. Uh, that was ep- that does it. That's episode 100, man. 100, 100 of them in the boy. books. Yeah, how about that? I can't, I can't. I'm looking forward to the next 100. Yeah, we're gonna, well, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna ride this out, man. We, it, I might even the gray might come in fuller by the time that, that we get to, to episodes two, three. We don't know how far we'll go. Yeah, well, it, it's pretty good here. Yours so. is good. Yeah, I'm, I'm still sprinkled. Yeah. I see. We'll see at two. We'll see at two hundred if there's any sprinkle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's gonna do it uh, for us here on Night Court again. You can follow us on Twitter at the Fish Nation at Brevin Night 22 or the show at Night Court 22. Follow all three of us, and um, you'll get links to the show uh, through Twitter, and uh, you can get notified. Make sure you subscribe uh, to the podcast as well. And if you're uh, listening to the podcast, want to remind you, you can watch the podcast uh, at Bluff City Media, uh, Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Uh, the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. We'll have links to it on Twitter as well. So uh, if you're on Twitter, you can check that out and uh, get the link to it and watch us uh, each and every week as well here on Night Court. So for BK, I'm Fish. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again next week. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Night Court Podcast. If you enjoyed Rob and Brevin, hit that like button, subscribe to the Bluff City Media YouTube channel, and enjoy the content. We will see you back here next time.